Hey, Tom here from the Run Testers with another Running Shoe Multi-Tester review. In this video, myself, Jane and Nick are going to be talking through the Nike React Infinity Run 3. Big thanks to ProDirect for getting us the test versions of these shoes to try out. We're not paid by them to do this review, so we can say whatever we like. But let's talk about shoes. The Nike Infinity React 3 costs £145 or $160. It weighs in at 310 grams or 10.9 ounces for men in a size 9 and the drop is 8 millimeters. The React Infinity Run Flyknit 3 is an updated version of Nike's popular daily running shoe. It's a solid option that ticks a lot of boxes for people who want a good balance of comfort and versatility, from slow training runs to more demanding sessions. The midsole is made from Nike's React foam, offering a balanced ride that feels cushioned without being noticeably soft. That midsole also features a wide base for added stability and there's a rocker to promote a smooth motion when running. The upper is made from a stretchy fly knit that feels roomy and breathable but still offers a secure fit and there's a healthy level of cushioning around the heel, ankle and padded tongue for a supportive fit. The fit for me in the Infinity Run 3 is true to size. It is an incredibly comfortable shoe. I've had no issues with it at all. The upper is this really nice elasticated fabric, which uh, even if your feet push against it, it's still very comfortable. It's like a sock design. Um, and yeah, I've found these shoes to be fantastically comfortable. So true to size for me. So I found that the Infinity 3 fit very much the same as the Infinity 2. It was completely true to size for me, very comfortable in my normal size. Uh, the only real change to the upper I actually noticed was that I think it's probably gonna be a little bit harder to rip the tongue out which <laughs> I think was a bit of a problem with the two I did eventually rip one side of the tongue on that shoe but yeah all good on the uh, fit of the three so fit wise I think they kind of come up pretty true to size I normally run in a five these are five had enough room in them pretty similar fit to the last version and yeah not much has changed in the fit of the shoe i've enjoyed running in the infinity 3 it's a shoe that really presented no surprises to me it's fair to say i've done about 50k in it and most of that's been easy running and that's really what it's for it's a great shoe for you know ticking off miles in a protective comfortable manner uh, with that kind of extra stability there for a neutral shoe, which you don't get on, you know, some other options. The ride isn't the most exciting in the world, um, and but it's, you know, it's not really very bouncy, but, you know, but the big rocker means that the ride isn't really harsh at all. It's not soft either, the React foam, but yeah, it just basically smoothly rolls through your foot strike, keeps on going. It's, it's got a little bit of speed in there, a little bit of versatility, but really is a shoe just to pull on for, you know, just racking up a lot of base miles, um, and it will serve you very well for that. Even though it is, you know, a bit heavier than previous versions, it doesn't feel like clunky on the foot or anything like that. The rocker really comes into play there and it's a very enjoyable shoe to use on tired legs. Like it's not one that I put in like straight in my rotation as my go-to easy option, but it is a shoe that, you know, every year I kind of come back to at certain points when I'm deep into marathon training and I've got a recovery run lined up. It's going to be fairly long. The mileage is creeping up and it's a great shoe to use for that just because if you are feeling slight niggles and stuff like that, it gives you a bit more confidence with that extra stability and that kind of fluid protective ride. So yeah, it's not going to set the world alight. It's a shoe that has a very clear job and it does its job well when it comes to your running experience. So I've done about 50K in this shoe so far and that has varied in distance between about 3K runs. I've been injured recently, so I've been doing a lot of recovery runs, um, but also up to about 15K. And the pace that I've been doing that at is mainly my base pace so that's around 440 to 5 minute kilometers um, but I have tried uh, a few faster kilometers just to see how the shoe delivers at speed and what I've found is that it's a very solid similar shoe to the previous iterations I did quite a few runs in the uh, 2 version of this shoe and I thought it was a very solid shoe um, for a variety of different sort of daily runs uh, and this one is very similar but what I would say with this shoe is I think it feels a little bit softer than the 2. Um, one of the things I didn't particularly like too much about the 2 which meant that I would generally go for another of one of my daily shoes is that it just didn't feel very soft. The React Foam midsole in the 2, this also has a React Foam midsole, that did feel for me a little bit firmer than what I would usually like for my daily training. 
I think that this shoe does feel like it's softer. I don't know how, I don't know what they've done to the foam, but it does feel like it's a softer shoe. Um, and also the upper of the shoe feels a little bit less rigid for me as well. It feels a little bit more elasticated, a little bit more comfortable, uh, and it just gives you a bit more wriggle room in the foot for uh, keeping your feet nice and um, in place but with room to move around. So over those runs, what I found about the shoe is it's just a very solid shoe. And I think that's basically where Nike are aiming uh, to go with this with range of shoes. It's a great daily shoe, but probably veers more towards the slower, easy miles than running faster. But I would say that it's versatile as well. I do know people that use this shoe for um, running uh, up to races as well, maybe even marathon um, distance because it's just a good all-rounder that may not be one of the fastest shoes in the world, but there's a lot going for it if you're just going to do the distance and you want to do it. There's something that's got a little bit more versatility in it than maybe something that's really heavily cushioned and not really designed for uh, running at a faster pace. That React Midsole Foam, it's not particularly bouncy foam, um, but it, it's a nice balance between stability um, and cushioning so it doesn't feel soft um, so it, it's there's a lot of structure in the midsole so the foot feels quite secure even though overall the shoe does feel like quite a, a comfy loose fitting shoe it does feel like your foot is nicely supported there's also quite a thick um, midsole width on that which adds a nice level of support as well for runners that probably not they're not necessarily needing to support shoes, but it's just a supportive shoe. So if you're looking for a daily trainer, but you just want it to have a little bit more um, structure and strength to the midsole, it's a good option for that. It really holds the foot in place and um, without feeling too uh, uh, noticeable uh, like a stability shoe. I'd also say that it has a good level of grip on the shoe as well for sort of general daily training miles. I have ran in the rain in the shoe. I've ran over various types of concrete to, to inclines and declines in, in this shoe and it does grip very well. There doesn't seem to be a lot of outsole rubber on there but it does the job. It's not um, it's not designed to be one of the most hard wearing shoes around um, but I think it does do a good job at grip and the combination of the outsole uh, and the midsole does feel quite durable as well. That React foam does tend to be a bit more durable than some of the um, more delicate foams out there. So it's probably a good shoe if you're looking for something to do most of your running in and you want it to last a while. So the run test. I like this shoe. I think it is a good kind of everyday, easy mile running shoe. The React foam in it is kind of, I guess what we've come to expect now, it's got like that good amount of responsiveness, but it's not bouncy, it's not a plush shoe. If you want like a really soft plush shoe, definitely go for the Invincible or something like that over this shoe. But it, I think it took a few miles to kind of break in the shoe to kind of feel that responsive foam. When you first put them on, I think I do a lot of running in kind of the Invincible and the Bondi. And when I first put it on, I was like, oh God, this is quite firm. But I think once you kind of get into it and break it in a little bit it, there is there is a lot of foam there there is a plush kind of it is kind of responsive and it is there um but you're not going to sink into it straight away um i felt like it was super stable i think these kind of rails around the back of the shoe do keep the foot kind of secure i tend to pronate a little bit when my foot's getting tired and i didn't tend to do so in that and then the upper i think the upper's kind of what's changed from past versions I felt like this was quite similar to the upper. My my, the upper on the original shoe I loved. That was my favourite shoe, and it was kind of really boot. It was light, and it was kind of like a booty construction. The upper on the second version wasn't that keen on. This one's kind of in between. Um, it's kind of lighter and it fits better, um, but yeah, it's still kind of a thick upper. So on the run, I did. I did like it, but I just wish it was more like the first version. But if you hadn't ever run in the first version, it's still a great shoe. So the verdict, I do like it. I think it's a great kind of everyday shoe. I probably wouldn't wear it for faster stuff, but it has got kind of enough it, you know, the React foam will let you pick up the pace, but I think there are better shoes to do kind of tempo sessions in. But it's a good kind of secure everyday shoe it looks cool so i think if you're spending what you're going to spend on it you could wear it in the gym you could wear it kind of to work i guess 
um, but that's not really why we buy running shoes but if you're going to spend money you want a shoe that doesn't look like a running shoe in my opinion um, and yeah it's a good kind of solid shoe it's very similar to the second version and I do think I would probably save my money and buy the second version in the sale because not a lot has changed apart from the upper you know you're still kind of running in the same shoe so definitely I think I would save and buy that version but if you're gonna buy the three you won't be disappointed it's kind of very similar it's a good kind of everyday training shoe so the verdict for me on the infinity run three is just a great solid all-round shoe I think um, I, I've been picking up this shoe just because sometimes I'll just go out for a run don't know where I'm gonna go don't know what I'm gonna do uh, and this is a good shoe for that it's just very comfy just does the job nice and versatile I think it's a good option for runners that probably just want one shoe and they don't want to buy loads of other shoes might be that you have a race shoe if you're focusing on racing but this could do your easy runs and your um your daily training miles if you're going up to sort of tempo pace probably not great for tempo pace um but if you're not training specifically for speed and you're more going for distance i think it's a good honest solid shoe that you can use for a lot of different runs and you'll probably have it for a while because it's solid sturdy piece of kit um, and that's probably where Nike are going with this shoe. I'd say alternatives for me uh, with this shoe would be the New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V11 or the, the new V12. That's another shoe that people generally wear and buy just as one shoe that they want to take them all the way from just starting running all the way up to running a marathon. Again it's not a fast shoe but it's got a slightly firmer midsole um it's it's got a nice rolling action to it and if you're focused on running a marathon but you're not going for you know really fast times you're not you're not desperately trying to get your speed up all the time that's another good option um as well as the infinity run three i'd probably say that, that shoe's a bit better for versatility i think it's a little bit nicer to run in at speed um but really it's very similar um so I mean, it just comes down to uh, how you like the feel of the shoe. I think those midsoles feel very similar in both of those shoes. Another shoe that I might go for is the uh, Saucony Ride 15. That shoe has had some updates made to it recently so that the midsole is a little bit softer. Um, it's a little bit more comfortable. I, I wasn't a massive fan of uh, the previous Ride shoes because they were a little bit too firm for me. It's not a heavily cushioned shoe, but it sort of sits in that mid world between a cushioned shoe and a firmer daily trainer so you get a bit of cushioning as well the latest version is a, a, a little bit more cushioned so i enjoy that shoe a bit more and i'd probably compare it with this as well i think that shoe's better for running at pace i think that's a shoe that can go up to tempo training well i don't think this can go up to tempo training competently um but for faster runs maybe if you're doing park run at the weekends or something like that and you want something to go a little bit faster um but you're not going all out and you want a carbon plate shoe so yeah i think solid good shoe uh, really fits well into that daily trainer just for the type of person that wants one solid shoe to cover a lot of types of running um and yeah i think it's probably the best version of the infinity run series yet so the Infinity 3 performed very much the same as the Infinity 2 for me, um, to the point where I'd definitely be looking to try and grab that shoe in a deal rather, rather than you know paying full price for the new shoe. But it is a shoe that generally does tend to crop up in Nike sales throughout the year anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much. Like I do think it's a bit overpriced, it's full RRP, but at the same time, it is very durable and you do kind of know what you're getting here. So um, if you are spending that money, you are kind of going to get what you expect from the shoe. It's a stable, neutral shoe that lasts a long time, that delivers a comfortable ride for easy miles, has a touch of versatility, but not too much. I'd say within Nike's range, the Pegasus is, is certainly the better value option, uh, the 39. Even though it does have a React midsole as well, it doesn't have the rocker, so it has a more kind of traditional ride, but I think it feels maybe a touch softer, it's a touch lighter, it's maybe a little bit more versatile. So yeah, yeah, if you're looking just purely on value, the Pegasus uh, offers a bit more of that. And it's also a very long lasting shoe with a really good thick outsole that works well on light trails as well as road. I mean, this outsole will last well, but the grip is not quite as aggressive as you'll find on the Pegasus. And then with the other option in Nike's range in the kind of cushion category is the Invincible, which is very different. It's very squishy, very fun, really enjoyable shoe. It does protect the legs in kind of a different way by being very soft, but 
it's not very stable. Um, and I think as much as I love the Invincible, I do like pulling it out. When I am kind of worried about my legs, I'm tired and I'm feeling a bit kind of creaky, I probably would opt for the Infinity just for the kind of extra stability elements and the slightly firmer ride, which does end up being a bit you know, more stable. So generally, it's not my preferred cushion shoe. The Puma Velocity Nitro 2, I think, still outdoes it. It's a lot cheaper, it's more fun, it's more versatile, it's comfortable. But yeah, the Infinity is a shoe with a really distinct purpose and it does that you know, very well. It's a comfortable, long-lasting, you know, fairly stable shoe that is great for easy miles and base miles. Uh, and the third version is very much the same as what we've seen before with an upper update that I personally didn't really notice on the foot. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon. It really does make a difference. And check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. Big thanks to ProDirect for getting us the shoes to test for this video and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching.